Hi everyone, and welcome to the Elephant TV. My name is Joe Kubuthi. Today I'll be in conversation with Njeru Wakadango, uh, a former MP of Rumyanjas, a uh, civic and civic civic leader in this country, and as he likes to call himself a servant, a servant of the people. Uh, so karibu, karibu Njeru Wakadango to the Elephant TV. That's sad, son. Okay, I mean, just just to start uh, this this great conversation, hoping to great conversation, is there's been there's been there's been quite 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 a bit of uh, conversations around in the constitution, particularly today with the Building Bridge Initiative, and we have seen very many initiatives before that. We saw we saw the uh, Punguza Mizigo and other other initiatives, but to many, particularly of particularly the younger generations who who make bulk of Kenyan population, they, many of them don't, don't know the social history and political history of how we got here. So if you could just kindly just elaborate, how did, how did Kenya get to the point of uh, passing the Katiba 10 constitution? And what was, what, what, was, what was the social and political history that led to that moment? Very good. I would like to start by saying thank you very much for inviting me to this forum. One of the things, as you wonder, that 4.5 million Kenyans who are youth do not know from where we have come. And if you don't know from where we have come, it's mm. very difficult to appreciate where we are. Right. And it is darkness, total darkness about where we are going. Mm -hmm. And it is not the 4.5 million. I guess majority of Kenyans do not know the history of this country. And the reason is, it is deliberate that Kenyans are kept in the dark so that they do not know from where they have come and therefore becomes very difficult for them to actually fight for their own liberation. And the reason is that while we know that Kenya stood very firm against oppression, against the empire, against the British rule, since 1915 to mm. this day, but there is one thing that happened. Between 1960 and 1970, it appears there was a very big conspiracy by those that were in the system and government then to deny Kenyans of that information. And the reason being that those that fought for the freedom, those that were in the struggle, those that liberated this country in the 1940s and 1950s were denied central spaces and central point in the government. And therefore, those that collaborated with the British, those that were the oppressors, actually became the majors and the rulers of the people. That has been perpetrated to this day. And it is therefore the reason why even the school curricula has totally denied the Kenyans pupil and the student of the right history and the political science, the understanding of the political economy so that they are kept in the dark and so that they do not open their minds to question the rulers and elders of this that is where I would start. So it is not 4.5 million. In fact, I think it must be about 35 million Kenyans who have been denied that history and people who are therefore incapable of analyzing and if you like, innovating on the social and the political front. That is where I would like to start for Buddha. Okay, so then, then, how, then how do we move from this point of, I mean, uh, us lacking our history, but then at the same time, there's a backdrop of, uh, for those, for those for there, there have been men and, men and women, valiant men and women, uh, uh, who, who have really pushed the, pushed reform, pushed reform to the point that we get the Trinidadian Constitution. What's the journey from 1963, when we got independence, to the 2010 Constitution? In fact, in fact, I would like to say this. You see, when Jomo Kenyatta was uh, being prepared to come and rule this land, because he was specifically prepared to come out here and ignore the freedom fighter. That is why he was transferred from Rocky Tang 
to mm. a place called Mararar, and he was in Mararar for close to two years or above two years and a preparation about mm. how he was coming through this mission. And one of the points that he was going to come and combat or fight is the feeling of the freedom fighter that he would have wanted to have some space in the government, which Kenyatta denied them and denied every Mau Mau freedom war warrior to enter or even to achieve anything that would be worthy mentioned. Remember, he came in 1961 when there was the preparation for the Lancaster Conference. And in the Lancaster Conference, the teams had already been made of Kadu and Kanu and those that were close to them to be able to be included in the discussions at the Lancaster. In fact, the Lancaster Constitution, all it means is that it was made in London so that it is given to the African and the African who had been chosen specifically to come and make sure that the British were saved. And those are the people that the constitution was handed over to. And therefore, during the, 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 the independence, the constitutions that were handed over, the documents that were handed over were actually handed over by the British to Kenyatta. It was not Kenyatta sharing the constitution with the British. It is the British that were giving the Kenyans a constitution what they thought would be the best for Kenyans and for them. That point was noted by Kenyans. And therefore from then, Kenyans started fighting to build and make their own constitution. And that constitution that they started fighting for is what culminated in 2010 constitution. Although it was driven by the Moy government and his experts. That is what Moy was always talking about. I would like to have a small committee of experts that are going to guide the people into making a new constitution. Because Wanjiku cannot understand what law and the constitutions are. That is mm -hmm. what Moy said. And the Kenyans were saying, no, we want to make our own constitution. If you look at this constitution, you will see something else that happened. While we were busy discussing these things in Bombers of Kenya, Amos Wako and his friends were meeting in his, in his office to think about how to circumvent people's power. And so when you look at the Kenyan constitution as it is today, it is generally agreed that more than 20% of that constitution does not fit the Kenyan aspirations at all. And both Mwai Kebaki and Raira Ondinga agreed that 10 to 20% of that constitution needs to be changed. And we were saying this, don't wait to be changed. Let us change it before we pass. Because passing it before we change is going to be another uphill battle. And that uphill battle, you are causing it as the leaders and you can see it. In fact, personally, I think that uh, because a lot of foreign organizations and foreign nations like Africa in conflict, like Africa in violence, like Africa in misunderstanding, <coughs> then they agreed to have the Kenyan constitution that was going to introduce conflict among us. And they succeeded. And therefore, what you see happening right now is not about changing the constitution. It's about oiling selfishness, where we have got uh, the present Kenyatta too, talking to Ondinga too, that they can perpetuate the same thing that they actually did between 1964 and 1969. And which is it? That the Western democracies or the Western nations think that every country that has got a government and has got an opposition, that country is democratic. 
the, the, the point here is that is not correct. I mean, the opposition in Kenya has been held by one family. And the government in this country has been held by one family. And it is like the Yangri went to disagree so that we appear to be democratic. My argument is this, whether Kenyans want it or like it or not, Raila has changed positions about three times. One, he joined the country to be secretary general. Mm. And he was the leader of the opposition. Mm. Bwana Raila then went to Kibake after he disagreed with Moi. Mm. So that he could become again a leader within the opposition ranks. Mm. And now he has brought us to what you are calling the BBI, which is consummation by government of the political leader of the opposition political leadership. Meaning, as it were today, mm. the Kenyan politic or the Kenyan body politic does not recognize per se the opposition politics, which makes nonsense of what we call democracy in this country. Mm -hmm. I agree with one thing. All those people, whether in Kenya or across the world that belong to the opposition are not supposed to be simple, perpetual opposers of everything government initiates. No, mm -hmm. when it comes to development, when it comes to security, when it comes to economic programs, both the opposition and the government are supposed to allow each other opportunity to express support of a national program that actually takes care of mm -hmm. society's aspiration. Not mm -hmm. about who defeated who. Mm -hmm. It is about what is good for the country. And so that I agree with. What I don't agree with is for somebody to tell us that when the opposition is consumed by the government, then we are cultivating for development and peace. That is not true. And therefore, mm -hmm. the BBI is a coming together of two people, Kondi Raira for Luos and the Jomo Kenya Uhuru Kenyatta. For, for, for the Gikoyos to tone down, to tone down, and I repeat, to tone down the seeming violence and hatred that was permeating our communities in January, February of 2018. Mm. And therefore, when Raida says, let us shake hands with Uhuru, he is telling his Luos, not to go for demonstrations again. Yeah, I mean, and what to, and what Uhuru is telling the Gekoyos is don't throw stones or ban shelters for Luos because now we have become one. Nos, and nos, we did the year one. Nos, 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 and nos, what, what they have been asking Kobudi is this how do we translate this? How do we interpret this? for people to understand. Mm. And then the shortest form is this. Let us look at the constitution and see whether the 10 to 20% they were talking about can be changed at this point. Mm. Instead of taking the 10 to 20%, those two gentlemen have decided to oil their own economic and selfish stomachs so that uh, the people can be cheated that we are changing the constitution. Yet what they are doing, they want to accommodate the majoritarian communities into the government so that they are silenced and therefore inject themselves into the leadership again next year. Okay. I disagree with them. Okay, I I I I completely I completely hear you with that. So I mean so I mean so so you're right. I mean, because we, what we're seeing in the context of, of BBI is two two people coming together and and using 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 a state machinery for their own self-interest. But then my question then is that 
taking us back to Katiba 2010 and, and, and asking, uh, the, the, the architects of Katiba 2010 in a sense were, were very clear on the aspirations of Wanjiko to in a sense put a yoke on our political class because we, because we cause put a yoke on our political class because of uh, their own self agenda. But, but what was it? What was it about our history that made the architects of, of, of the Constitution 2010 to, in a sense, put a yoke or to put a burden on our political class to avoid them to change the Constitution as they as they will and want, but also to to really uh, raise the bar, raise the bar towards accountability and, and and transparency of our political class. What was it with our social history that made us? Uh, do that to a political class. You see, you see, this this is the constitution you are talking about, Kobudi. Nice. Our constitution. This is the constitution. When you look at this constitution, there are so many little things and big things which have been ignored. So making of this constitution by those who are calling the architects, the first thing was assumption that Kenyans are primitive and backward. And therefore, they will not mind whether we followed it or not. And that is the way I take it myself, that if Kenyans were keen to look at what this constitution really says and what the leaders do with it, then by now they would have said no to whatever machinations that the leadership calculates and promotes. Why am I saying this? People have fought all the time to have their own constitution. And the, People have died, they have given their lives, they have been imprisoned, detained, some of them forced into exile because dictators decided that they should not do according to what people want. Now, so when we said we make the constitution and we went out everywhere saying this is what Kenyans want, instead of them bringing to this black and white book to say that is what Kenyans want, they started diluting it by inject some small little things against the will of the people. Why? Because that they, just like our colonialists, think that Kenyans should be kept busy, they should be kept poor, they should be kept sick, we should be kept hungry. And now when the four of them combine, the only thing that Kenyans can take respite on is drunkenness and drug addiction because there is nothing else for them to do. And so they introduce to us cheap drinks, cheap drugs, so that when I am hungry, I am sick, I am poor, I am houseless. The only one thing that can make me forget my tribulations is beer. Mm. And so, and so, and so then they introduced you beer to us so that we are totally dismembered. But, but, but what was it then? I mean, I hear you, but what was it about then? I mean, you're right. I mean, I think that there are very many, I mean, particularly within the Boma strap, there are very many things that uh, people say it could have been a better constitution. That said, there's also, there's, also, there's also the side that says, looking at our social, looking at our history as Kenyans uh, during the colonialism, I mean, 19, 19, 1895, uh, 1920, when it became a colony to 63, but then from 693 to, to, to 2010, what was it about our social history that Kenyans, when Jiko said, we don't want an imperial presidency. We don't want, uh, what was it about, about that that makes no, Wanjiko very, makes Wanjiko very afraid and timid, not timid, but very uh, cautious around an uh, all-powerful executive. You see, you see what, what, what Kobudi was doing now is to look at the institutions so created by the constitution. Mm -hmm. And we are looking at who held authority and power right. over the nations. Mm -hmm. that, that I think is what you are looking at. Remember from that 1895 to 18, 1920, when we have, been, we have been declared a colony, that time, Kenya is led by social groups such as the clans in their, in their regions, in their communities. Mm -hmm. And therefore, by the time the Mzungu 
as declaring Kenya a colony in 1920, we already have leadership structures. Mm -hmm. Every community and their own leaders, their own, their own warriors, generals who commanded wars, people that were consulted by other communities. So that if there was any conflict or misunderstanding between community A and community B, it would be sorted out by those leaders. Now, when declaration of colony was declared, then it means you are kind of creating redundancy of that leadership. And that is how our own people started feeling that they are being oppressed. And so from then on, from 1920, if you follow that history, then you will see emergence of resistance. And from 1920 up to 1963, there was constant resistance in Kenya because of the taking away of our power and authority. That's number one. Therefore, when Kenyans are saying they don't want a unitary imperial president, they are simply saying, when you load all power and authority of one person, he fights every custom, he fights every tradition, he fights every mode of leadership because he wants all of it to be his. Yet we have got the clan leader, we have the community leader, non-customary, and we were saying then and now, it is not fair that we take a British model that takes away authority and or the power from the people because they are. Therefore, when we are making this constitution, we were saying, remove the imperial presidency and let it be shared by various people so that authority is checked and balanced. How? And that is how devolution was coming in. Mm -hmm. And some of us were not simply talking about devolution. We were saying we should create about 14 states in Kenya. And those states are governed by governors. And those governors have their own space, just like you see other federal systems, where those communities would be ruling over themselves. They would have their own mode of economic uh, development, including taxation. And it is that state that would be sharing resources with the national or the federal government. So that it is not the federal government to distribute. It is the governors and the federal state that would be giving government something like 10 or 15% so that they can take care of national issues like national health services, like the security systems, like infrastructure on highways, et cetera, et cetera, but not for the state to be the one, to be the back of the whole nation. And right. that is what we were saying. Now, they diluted that. And instead, <clears throat> they talked of the congestion. We were not talking of the congestion. We were talking about devolution, actual devolution that we can leave the presidency and the executive as the symbol and the authority and the power goes to the people and the young governors. That is what we were talking about. And mm -hmm. even today, I will still talk about it because what we have in the devolution is ethnic cocoons that does not help building statehood, but creating ethnic divisions and widespread conflicts and Mm. I mean, okay, then I mean, you're, 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 but, but what you're saying, I mean, what you're saying, which now brings me back here, isn't what the BBI document is saying. So even if you were to locate now the BBI document, uh, which was, uh, uh, which was uh, pronounced by, uh, which was pronounced after the, after the, the, the March 8th handshake, which the, the BBI committee, ETC, what, what you're saying, the social history of Kenya and even the aspirations of, of many of the leaders there is is different from what uh, the BBI is telling us. So how 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 do you marry the two? How do you marry uh, what you're talking about and what BBI and and what BBI in particular, what Hulu Kenyatta and 
his handshake partner, Raila Odinga, as we have been telling us, how do you marry the two? And so locating really BBI within, within Kenya's political struggle. Well, what I would like to say, my brother Kobudi, uh, to, to the Elephant TV, is this, that every system, including government, as a self-destroying mechanism. And what we, are, what we are witnessing today, to the ignorance of a lot of people, is that uh, both Raira and Uhuru are actually work, working against themselves. They may not have chosen to work against themselves, but naturally, they are working against themselves because the people did not have power to fight them. So they are fighting themselves. Why and how? Because number one is that they have brought up a BBI, which is born of hatred, what you may call political settlements. And the political settlement is born of people who kind of are conflicted and so that we can stop things called uh, wars and violent conflicts, mm. then the two gentlemen want to use that theory and principle so that the principle kind of includes them in what I am calling misguided planning. So that the two of them are saved because the Gekoyos are asking Uhuru, who are you going to leave it to? And he doesn't know. And the Luos are asking Uhuru Raira, who is going to be a successor? He has not prepared one. And so these fellows want to reboot themselves so that they can renew their uh, political stances. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm saying with that kind of masquerading, with that kind of hypocrisy, right. it will be very difficult for Kenyans to associate themselves with a misguided plan. Mm -hmm. So my recommendation is this, let them continue. And we are going to see reactions all over, including in the parliament including the judiciary, and even within the executive itself, just like we can see that the mountain Kenya region is riddled with conflicts and misunderstandings. And you can look at Nyanza, and you have got silent and creeping misunderstanding and conflicts, because the two leaders think they are the knowledge, the power, and the authority of the regions. And the answer is, that is not so. Okay, so so this is this is so it's very I mean so you're right I mean you I mean you what you're saying is that BBI is not is I mean it was it's it's not it's not really fixing Kenya's problems this is what you this is what you're, so but then so then I mean so for for I mean as a, as a 20 25 year old 30 year old listening to listening and watching watching you and he's read he and she he or she has read in their history. And we fought for independence in 1963, and you know, and and the um, and the ending uh, a modicum of, of white man's rule. And then in 1992, I mean, and then I mean, and from 63 to 1992, I mean, we fought uh, dictators. And in 1992, we passed uh, the multi-party multi-partyism with the Bill of Section 2A in, in December 91. And then in 2002, I mean, we removed. Uh, uh, what we removed an autocrat, and then in 2010, you know, following the post-election violence of 2007, we removed, uh, we passed the, we passed the 2010 constitution. So then, what then today is, what then today is Kenya's struggle? What should we be struggling with? What should we be, what should we be articulating? How do we frame today's struggle that can begin to galvanize the uh, people? Around around uh, ideas that that can move the country forward. The saddest thing, the the very saddest thing, is mm -hmm. that uh, the youth of this country have taken a back seat, and those that are active are looking for shortcuts to make money, and those that are make money are not looking for anything else but to buy cars and houses, which means 
that the rest of the population has been left with nothing. The hope and the strength of a nation is in their youth. What we should be struggling now to do is to remove that cobweb called lack of commitment and looking for shortcuts from the minds of our young people. Because I think the older generation has let down the youth. They have not guided them. They have misled them and they have denied them knowledge. And not only knowledge, they have given opportunity to the leaders that are selfish, that a thief today is acclaimed as a hero, that a murderer is going to be let free and work among the people, that a, a character that has grabbed land from innocent people's ownerships are the ones that are ruling this nation. That becomes an example to the young people. When the criminal and when the evil become the role models, then that whole society becomes totally disoriented. And so some of those of you who are committed to building a good society, a strong nation, are requested to start fighting for the deflocking of that deprivation from the young people, because every generation fights for itself. Mm, and, and if the young people cannot fight for themselves in this generation, how do we wake up the dead command to come and fight for them? And, and how what do is, we wake up those that fought in 1960s and 70s to right. come and fight for them? Mm. How can they be by standards and mm. waited by roadsides to be mm. given money for them to be able to survive. Mm. If they are denied opportunities, it is not me to fight for my son who is 50 years. It is my son to know that he has also now to protect his children, but he cannot hope that it is Jero Kathangu because he was involved with the Jomo Kenyatta and he involved with the Moi and he involved with the Kebake that he should be the one to come and rescue them. It mm. is them to do it. If they were denied the knowledge, go seek that knowledge. If they were denied the history, go dig that history. And if they have been denied the livelihoods, it's for them to reinstate them. Mm. And what, what is yeah. our fight? What, I mean, what is our fight? I mean, for, see, that is what the people are saying. Why do the... people want to be told, mm. <clears throat> my friend, why do people want me to tell them what their fight is? Don't they have a struggle <laughs> themselves? That is true. When I was fighting in 1970s, mm -hmm. that time I was a very young man. Mm. I knew what my struggle was. I did not want to be oppressed. I did not want to be denied. Everybody was taking everybody's land and we were saying, please stop it. Today, the young people have been denied. denied. They have no job. They have no money, they have no land, they have got nothing. How can I tell them what to struggle for? That the only true. one thing I can remind them is this, mm -hmm. if they die, and if they are not struggling, they are better do. If they do not <laughs> struggle, they will definitely die. And mm -hmm. when they die, then they will leave the children of the oppressors to be the next generation leader. And that is the intention. Wow, I think I think we I think I think we we limited of that very 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 uh, very very harsh ending. That if we don't if the young people of this country don't uh, don't don't fight for their for themselves, they they leave their country the children of the oppressors. Yes, I mean I mean just look at it. Eh? Mm. I I fought Jomo Kenyatta. Right. I fought Daniel Tori, teacher of Moi. Right. Those we fought with are all dead. Those we were fighting are all dead. Are the youth telling me today that I should be their general? No, no, absolutely what, what not. What is their struggle? Mm. That is the question you're asking. That is and I would question. like somebody to tell me what their struggle in this generation is. Let me not interpret what my struggle was. I want somebody mm. in this generation to tell me what their struggle is. Otherwise, I can wait for Uhuru to lead them and, and uh, Ruto to lead them, whether to heaven or to hell, because they cannot hear what we are telling them 
they are waiting to be bought beers kula nyama kila weekend na waingie kwa Prado hakuna kazi nyingine wako nayo mm. yeah we can leave it at that if they want kenya to be a slave nation it's up to them it is the generations right to own a country that is indebted for 3 400 years from now and then tomorrow they will have nothing to eat they cannot blame their mother they can only blame themselves oh, wow okay i'm <laughs> to miss you on that very very hot and very 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 hot and very very seething note i'd like to end this conversation here and uh thank you very much for giving me your time here here at the elephant tv i am sorry about that uh, that, that but that is the truth no 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 absolutely absolutely uh, absolutely and th- 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 thank you for that for viewers asante sana for viewers thanks thanks for listening if you want to listen more to this and more conversations please subscribe to the uh, youtube channel follow us on YouTube, on twitter and facebook and instagram and catch more uh, content on our website www.elephant.info asante sana